Hi, my name is Sally Field, and I'm a stroke neurologist working in Canada. You may know that stroke is one of the leading causes worldwide of death and disability, but the fortunate news is that a large part of stroke is preventable. One major thing that you can do to reduce your risk of stroke and that of your loved ones is to be aware of blood pressure. Well-controlled blood pressure is one of the number one ways that you can reduce your stroke risk. Another major way to protect your brain and your cardiovascular health is to exercise. Moderately vigorous exercise, even three times a week for about 20 minutes, is enough to reduce your risk of stroke as a way to start. Another major thing that you can do for your overall health and the health of your blood vessels in your brain is to not smoke. Smoking is a major preventable risk of stroke. So um, those are three basic things that you can do to reduce your overall risk to promote your health and that of those you love. In the name of God, uh, hello everyone. It is my great pleasure and I am more than happy and honored to welcome our renewed guests and delegate to the fifth chapter of MENA uh, Education Academy Service the Grand Round Series 2023 20, organized by MENA Stroke Organization. Middle East and North Africa Stroke Association Stroke Organization, or MENASO, uh, which is the region-wide non-profitable uh, organization committed to a vision uh, to reduce overall stroke burden in the MENA region. Uh, MENASO uh, Education Academy Cerebrovascular Grand Run Series 2023 is endorsed by the World Stroke Organization WSO, Pan Arab uh, Union of Neurological Societies, uh, Sheikh Khalifa Stroke Institute, John Hopkins Medicine, and the American Stroke Association. Uh, as you know, the focus of uh, today's webinar is on the epidemiology of stroke. I'd like to introduce uh, myself and our co chairman, the first. Uh, I am Mehdi Farhoudi, professor of neurology in Tabriz University of Medical Sciences. I received fellowship of a stroke from the University of Calgary in Canada. I am I was a board member uh, in the board member of World Stroke Organization in the last six eight years, uh, between 2016 to 2022. And now I, I am the board member of Iranian Stroke Association and Director of North Science Research Center and, and uh, ISO program in our university in, in Tabriz, Iran. And uh, about our co-chairman is uh, Dr. Uh, Said Safiri. Uh, he, since uh, 20, uh, 2016, uh, he's been a faculty member uh, of university and has taught uh, a member of courses, including uh, in principles of epidemiology, epidemiology of non-communicable diseases, statistical methods in epidemiology, research methodology, and etc. to international and national uh, students in the courses of MSc, MPH, and PhD courses. Dr. Safiri currently working on more global health. He is an assistant professor of epidemiology in the Aging Research Institute in our university. Uh, as I said, he's working on global health of the diseases and collaborated with a number of internationally uh, famous university and organizations such as University of Oxford, McGill University, and American Cancer Society during the uh, last six years. And he, he has studied uh, the epidemiology of some non-communicable non diseases, but the main research focus has been the burden of musculoskeletal and neurological disorder. And Dr. Safiri, uh, Mm, Dr. Safi, don't join us, uh, but joining later. Uh, and uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, remind. Hi, Professor Fabri, I'm here. Question. You are here? Okay. Dr. Safiri, you have other addition? Uh, 
other notes about yourself and as a welcome no thank you so much uh, hi everyone uh, dr farhudi introduced me and there is a no additional information to be added thank you so much i'm uh, following the meeting thank you okay okay and i'd like to have a remark about the q and answer session uh, we will have a interactive session in the end of lectures uh, our colleagues uh, can post uh, any question about topics in the q and answer box and we will uh, discuss about that in the end of uh, meeting and now i'd like to introduce the first speaker first speaker is dr esan sharifipur uh, he's a medical doctor and now associate professor of neurology is board member of iranian Sok association uh, director of the stroke program and vascular center in the University of Shahid Beheshti. He is a head of stroke unit in Shohata et Hajrish, Territory University Hospital in Tehran. And he's one of the more active uh, uh, Iranian in person in, about the stroke session in the uh, National Stroke Program. Due to time overlapping of our charity, uh, we will have the record of his lecture now and he will join us at the q and answer part thank you the topic of his uh, lecture uh, uh, hello. is about uh, it's my pleasure to this book. okay a prospective population based study of uh, the stock in seeds in the central part of iran please start We can start the lecture now, doctor. Okay, okay, please. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present my lecture uh, in uh, MENA organization. Uh, also, I want to express my uh, appreciation to Professor Sohail Arok and Professor Mehdi Farahoudi for inviting me. Uh, my lecture is taken uh, from a study which was published in International Journal of Stroke in 2021, entitled as a prospective population-based study of stroke in the central region of Iran, the COM incidence of stroke uh, study. Uh, as you know, stroke is a global health emergency that involved every population widely in the world and large geographic variation was found uh, around the world. Most deaths occurred, uh, uh, unfortunately, in developing countries with an increasing trend. Uh, moreover, data according to uh, standardized methodological criteria can help adequate planning of healthcare services and allocating limited resources. Excuse me. Uh, this study was done in Iran in a large geographic area with several distinct ethnic groups in different regions of this country with different uh, risk factor variation and disease incidence varies in different regions of the country. Uh, until now, few population-based studies have been conducted in the Middle East area and uh, no population-based study was done in the central region of Iran. So this is the first study, and we aim to uh, report the incidence of stroke compared to other uh, countries. About the methodology of our study, I can say that it was a, a prospective population-based study uh, was done between November 200, uh, 2018 to 2019 and we uh, report the uh, incidence of first ever in a lifetime stroke for one year. Uh, we use the definition, the last definition presented by WHO, it means rapidly developing clinical sign of focal or global disturbance of cerebral function lasting more than 24 hours or leading to disability or death with no apparent cause other than uh, that of vascular origin. Uh, 
also we considered at least one neuroimaging brain CT scan for confirming the uh, presence of stroke. Uh, about the stroke area, uh, I can say it was done in Com province. province. Study population was uh, one million two hundred nineteen two thousand and two hundred eighty three inhabitants, which uh, fifty one percent of them were male. Of these, ninety five percent are urban population, and ninety three percent of them live in Com city. We catch data from seven hospital and 33, 37 urban and rural health center and 170 public health houses. Uh, we report our data as uh, per uh, 100,000 person year. About case, uh, about case finding procedures, uh, I want to say. All, investig all investigators have received a standardized training program about the study protocol. Also, during the study period, these coordinators remove the patients with another diagnosis. We aim to identify two groups of stroke patients, hospitalized and non-hospitalized stroke patients. Uh, for this, multiple sources were used. Uh, were used for a uh, wide and maximum coverage of as many stroke patients as possible, even mild cases who may not have been referred to hospitals for admission. Collection of main risk factor uh, also was done, and uh, collection data about outcome was done in this study. Uh, about the hospitalized stroke patient, we uh, have. Uh, continuous data collection from all uh, seven hospitals during the study. And about the non hospitalized stroke patients, all related physicians and health staff in that area were informed about the study and were asked to report stroke patients on a monthly basis. Also, we uh, scheduled that monthly study coordinators visited all the nursing care home, private clinics, public clinics, and rural and urban public health centers and houses to ensure that no cases were missed. Uh, were missed. Uh, and finally, the study team also reviewed all the uh, death certificates uh, on that region to identify non hospitalized uh, fatal stroke cases until two months after the study. Uh, data about the stroke risk factors, for example, diabetes, mellitus, uh, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and other were obtained from patient medical records or interview with the patient or their families. The patient death was recorded up to 28 years, 28, uh, excuse me, days later. Before final inclusion, a panel of stroke experts reviewed suspicious or disputed cases. Uh, also, our study had approval by the Ethics Committee of Com University of Medical Sciences, and the identity information of all cases in, is considered confidential. About the result of our study, I can say a total of 1,000 462 first ever stroke patients were detected. 78.86% uh, were ischemic stroke, 18.19% hemorrhagic stroke, and 2.9% were uh, considered as undefined type. Mean age of our study patients was 68.8%. Uh, one, zero, 01 with a standard deviation of 14.55. It means we have patients from 17 years old to 103 years old. Males was dominant, 54.8%. Also, the completeness of main risk factor and identification data was between 75% and 86%. This table demonstrates the demographic information and distribution of the main risk factor of incidence case in our study. As you see, uh, total incidence is 
1,462. At average age is 6, uh, 60, uh, 68. Uh, the patient uh, older than 65 years old uh, were about uh, 850. Uh, as about a stroke type, I can say ischemic stroke was in uh, 78 percent intracerebral hemorrhage in 15 percent subarachnoid hemorrhage in 3.2 percent and undefined in 2.9 percent about the main risk factor uh, as you see hypertension was detected in 84.28 percent diabetes mellitus in 42 percent smoking in 19 percent and hyperlipidemia in 37 uh, percent and uh, about the obesity or bmi by the mass index more than 30 uh, as you see uh, uh, 21 percent at obesity uh, the interesting uh, finding is that the uh, smoking is uh, different between male and female it means uh, male uh, have more uh, smoking 33 percent but female uh, have only three percent smoking uh, our data showed that annual incidence rate uh, is uh, 145.4 uh, one it means uh, 155.5 for male and 134 Point three for female. For hemorrhagic stroke, we find uh, the annual incidence rate of uh, 26.4, and for ischemic stroke, we find 114. If we consider the uh, adjust uh, to the world uh, population, we can say that uh, 201.4 per 100,000 at the population higher in men than in women. Uh, it means uh, 218.5 versus 187.4, uh, with a significant difference. Uh, moreover, about the age group, we uh, see an increasing trend every five years intervals. This table, <coughs> excuse me, uh, demonstrate the crude and age adjusted annual incidence rate of a stroke. Uh, as you see, when we adjusted our data to the world population, uh, we can see about all stroke 201 for male, 218 for female, 185 for a younger patient than 64 years old, uh, 70. Uh, six and for uh, older patient uh, than 65 uh, the, we find uh, 1188 and about the uh, subtypes uh, we see the data where ad uh, after adjusted to the world population uh, 161.8 for ischemic stroke and 90.2 for hemorrhagic strokes. Uh, about the outcome, I can say that the mortality of our study was 90.6 for 28 days. Uh, no statistical difference in outcome related to diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and smoking was detected, but the uh, fatality rate was higher in women and in patient over 65 years old. This uh, graph also show the uh, trend and uh, rise uh, and is a stroke incidence in uh, older patients. Uh, if we analyze the data about 28 days fatality rate, uh, we can see this table. This table also show the only two factors that significantly increase on the uh, two and the uh, fatality rate are sex uh, and age groups. 
uh, actually this um, graph is very important for us because uh, overall it show the result the result of our study uh, as uh, you can see obviously uh, our data demonstrated that the incidence the incidence of uh, first stroke uh, in our country Iran is more than many countries for example Croatia, India, Japan, Brazil, French West India and Australia. But but it is less than less than uh, studies in Greek and China. Uh, interestingly, we can see that uh, our data are similar to the previous population based study which was done in 2010 in Mashhad by Professor Azar Paju. Uh, finally, I can say that uh, the incidence of a stroke in this region uh, is uh, higher than the global average. It is occurs at younger ages and accompanied by the higher prevalence of underlying risk factors. Compared to other regions, we obviously see that uh, our data is similar to Mashhad study, which uh, I want to say that Mashhad uh, is located in the northeast of Iran, and that study was reported in 2010. Uh, but our data uh, showed that the incidence rate is lower than Greek and China uh, incidence study, but higher than other countries. Uh, the, difference of our study was about case ascertainment, uh, ethnicity, life habits, vascular risk factors. Also, we exclude all of the TIAs. Higher rate of hypertension, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, smoking, and obesity than the global average um, surprised and shocked us. Uh, but uh, we can say that uh, similar gender difference was seen in our study it means higher in males like other country like other uh, reports uh, about also about the case fatality rate i can say that the estimated uh, rate was 19.6 uh, percent which was higher than the previous population based studies um, it needs more uh, more caution and more planning uh, for um, some policymakers. Uh, actually, we can say that the higher stroke rate in our study may be uh, related to the ethnic differences or maybe due to probability of missing some mild cases in the community because we reported a community, uh, a popular based study, and maybe by, um, by our methods, we missed some mild cases which uh, never referred to the public, to the public or uh, private uh, health services. Uh, about the mean age, also we find uh, uh, were different uh, finding. It means the average age of the Iranian population is significantly lower than other countries. We find the uh 78 years old at the mean age of a stroke in iran uh, which is older than mashhad study which i said you previously but younger than most western population for conclusion uh i want to say the epidemiologic view of a stroke uh, uh, study in iran uh, is uh, generally similar to global view of uh, global uh, view with differences uh, uh, which uh, i can say that higher incidence than the global average occurs at younger ages and accompanied by the higher prevalence of underlying stroke risk factors uh, thank you very much for your attention it's uh, the end of my presentation Thank you, Dr. 
Shari Hifur for the nice presentation. Uh, hope to join in, him in the end of meeting in the live. Now I'd like to introduce a second speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Mohammad Reza Azar Paju. Uh, as uh, introducing uh, him, uh, Dr. Azar Paju earned his medical degree from Mashhad University of Medical Sciences in Iran in 1995 and completed the neurology residency in the Qaim Hospital in 2000. And subsequently, Dr. Azar Paju completed his fellowship program at the National Institute Research Institute in the Melbourne University in Australia, uh, with the emphasis uh, on the stroke and neurosynology. His stroke fellowship and associate professor now at the Western University of Canada. Prior to joining this, this department, Dr. Azar Paju was the head of uh, and founder of Neurosynology Unit in the Neurology Intensive Care Unit and Stroke Unit at the KM Hospital in Mashhad in Iran. In addition, Dr. Azar Paju held the position of Associate Dean of the Graduate and Postgraduate Studies and Vice President of Treatment uh, Affairs at Mashhad University of Medical Sciences in Iran. And now um, we want to have a Dr. Azar Paju presentation. His topic uh, is about stroke epidemiology from public health at risk satisfaction and geographical studies. Uh, Professor Azar Paju, please start. Um, good day, everybody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, please. Um, is it okay that I share my screen? Yes, please. Yes, we have. Okay, everybody. Um, my name is Dr. Mahmoud Reza Zarpajou. Today, I'd like to talk to you about stroke epidemiology. There was a typo from public health to risk stratification and geographical study. Uh, Dr. Farhoudi introduced me. I am an associate professor um, of neurology, Department of Clinical Neurological Sciences, also associate professor in Department of Epidemiology and Neurosciences, I am working at the Stroke Prevention and Atherosclerosis Research Center in Western University, and I'm also a Robot Research Institute scientist at this time. Uh, for the purpose of this specific study, I have no specific disclosure. Um, now, what we know in epidemiology and public health, I think my friend, Dr. Sharif Kumar, made my life a little bit easier. Um, we know about data. We know that data strengths can change policy, education, and research. Um, but what I want you to know about that, I'm not sure why I cannot continue. Oh, yes. Okay. You will tell me, all of you, we know that, Reza, this is so boring. I know this is boring. What you don't know, you, you need to know that data, it's pain. You need to know that you need to sacrifice many things. It is time. Forget about weekends and confusion sometimes. Trust me, as a neurologist, I will tell you, data means deep coma. Now, for today's topic, I like to talk to my junior colleagues, particularly and students. I want to share with them my clinical experience in population-based studies. I want to know why they are important, and I want to push them and ask them to look forward. This is something that you need to learn in this type of studies. Before starting my talk, I'd like to thank my, all of my teachers. Particularly, I want to name two of them in 2000 and graduated from Mashhad. This is Professor Mohammed Mehdi Etemadi. I'd like to thank him. And after that, I'd like to thank my mentor, Dr. Reza Sadr Nabavi in Mashhad. 
Um, in 2002, I went to Australia, as Mehdi said, um, again, I was so lucky. I was trained by Professor Jeff Dunnan and National Stroke Research Institute in um, Melbourne. And then I was so, so lucky. I met this wonderful woman, Amanda Treve. And this was the time that I realized that I am in love in public health. It was so crazy. I, I, I was a neurologist, but I was so interested in epidemiology and public health. In fact, I published one of my first papers in epidemiology using um, North East Melbourne Stroke Incidence Study. They had uh, one beautiful population-based study at that time. My idea at that time is if we have lacunar stroke, is it possible that for recurrence we have hemorrhagic strokes because they share similar pathophysiology and they share similar risk factors? So shall we give aspirin to them? In fact, I showed that we have higher rate of um, bleeding, but it was not significant. Anyway, when I came back Iran, I said, why we do not have similar study in the Middle East? And let's design a similar study. I designed this study, Masha, the Stroke Incidence Study. The paper first published in the prestigious Journal of Stroke. Um, we showed as uh, as as uh, um, in, you saw in the previous email, the very excessive incidence of a stroke in Iran. You can see it here in the before Ukraine. Um, at the same time, we showed a high rate of um, high rate of ischemic stroke. And what, what was it was not surprising for many of us. If you look at, for example, here, rate of a stroke at age 65 in Mashhad in black column, you can see it was very similar to age 75 in other countries. So age of a stroke, but 10 years younger than other countries. Again, you can tell me, hey, Reza, I'm so bored. Don't tell me all of this. I know, I know, uh, but I was in love. In Farsi, we have something that say, pass of love seems easy at first. What came was many hardship. And I want to tell you about these hardships. So for methods, this study, we did this study in Mashhad, the second biggest city in North East of Iran. I'd like to introduce my beautiful city to you. And I'd like to thank about one person you can see here, Hakim Ferdosi, who saved our language Farsi. Uh, population, this was a population-based study, and I selected three different regions of Mashhad from low, middle, and high-income country, high, sorry, high socioeconomic status areas. Population of the selected area was more than about 450,000. Uh, but we reviewed hospital records. I don't want to tell you about that. You can always tell me it was, yes, painful. I love Mo Saleh. I don't know if you, you know him or not. I love him. But be sure that even Mo cannot count in a number of cases with red t-shirts. It was a door-to-door -door study for 450,000. We went door-to-door -to, -door to see the stroke happened or not in one year. So what we did at that time, I used community health volunteers. This is a wonderful plan in Iran. It started in 1991. The plan is to build up a partnership between community and hospital and healthcare system. You can tell me again, this is a brilliant idea. So I have 1,000 case, 1,000 volunteers. They check and we ask them to go with four and see 500 about population. And we did that. So do you agree with me? Oh, <laughs> it was a brilliant idea. The problem is I had less than $4,000. And when I sent the first thank you letter for these volunteers, what I left, it's more less than $2,000. And after that, again, I want to tell you no brain, no pain. No, I will tell you no data, no pain. Data management was the most difficult part in the study. And still, I will tell you to all of you, for my junior colleagues, data management, it's the most difficult thing that you can do in a research. But anyway, you need, when you go with cohort like this in Middle East, my suggestion is you need a time machine, which unfortunately you don't have it because you don't have time. It was, we were planning to call our patient every three months and it was so difficult. So you need to be ready to sacrifice many things. 
I canceled my clinics. I lost a major source of my income. In fact, I started calling my patient from my clinic. No weekends. A good news is I continued to exercise. In fact, I got my black belt in karate at that time, but not just to exercise because I had no money. So just for information, I did some other works. <laughs> but at the same time, I said that it's a strength. So this was the time for negotiation and changing health policy. We started the first Noor ICU in Mashah. Then we started Norestra Care Unit in Mashhad. We did not, I'm talking about period that access to TPA, it's not easy like this. In fact, we did not have access even to CAT scan or MRI. So this was the time saying to other people, a stroke is important and we have a power to negotiate and negotiate and negotiate. At the same time, data means research and education. So after that paper, we published one year case fatality. We showed a very high rate of uh, deaths. We showed five years, very high rate of a stroke recurrence among our patients. This is in neuroepidemiology. After that, we reported five years deaths. I don't need to tell you how difficult it was to follow all of our cases for five years but you need to sacrifice many things. Trust me, my friends. Then we realized long-term disability in five years. Again, unfortunately, it was not surprising for us. Disability rate after a stroke in our country as a symbol of Middle East was extremely, extremely painfully worse than other countries of the world. We look at difference between a stroke in men and women, there are many things that we need to know about a stroke in women. This is something that we missed in many of our studies, unfortunately. It was not surprising, but we showed that cases with low socioeconomic class, they were at a higher risk of a stroke, mortality and death. This is not surprising, but again, this is a painful finding. We look at even difference in stroke epidemiology and reported the first difference between intra and extracranial atherosclerosis. We look at even um, a stroke with undetermined source. This was the time that, in fact, I was in Canada and I reported the result of this before Navigate to Professor Hart. What was my finding was a stroke with undetermined source. It's not similar to embolic a stroke of undetermined source. And I still believe that. And this was the time that we started navigate and, res and after that respect, respect to studies to give patients anticoagulant medication. But there are idea in my country and many Middle Eastern country that a stroke is happening because of a stress. We show that there is no association between acute stress before and then um, stroke, but you can ask me, so what? You had a lot of publication. What are you planning to do? No, there is no rest. So I designed another population-based study in healthy people. We call it Mashad study. This is a population base in healthy volunteer for, for um, sample size 10,000. We are now in 10 year follow-up of this study. I don't want to talk about this study today. We have more than 100 publication based on this study at this time. But um, what I want to tell you, it's you need to look forward. I love walking friends. This is a very poisonous mushroom close to my home. We call it here, I don't know why, but they, they call it here chicken wood mushroom. But if you stay at one point, you will become chicken point mushroom. You need to change the plan. You need to think and you need to look forward. Again, what I'm thinking about looking forward, this is my back garden. I need to go up of this mountain. You need to go above that to see what is happening behind that. And I will tell you, it is beautiful. Research in health, it's beautiful, but you need to look forward. So, in fact, my good friend said Ali Musavi and Dr. Khorbash from Sfahan suggested first, Reza, why we don't do a data mining study based on your finding? And this is the first time that I ask, oh, what? what is the meaning of that? We published the first paper. After that, um, I had a PhD student, a wonderful Mahdier Fanyan, and we say that, can we change health performances? So, going from 
population-based study, public health study now shifting toward deep learning, machine learning, and risk stratification was the new thing that I said we need to do that. This is, in fact, the last paper that we submitted last week. Um, 2015, I came to this beautiful city, London, Canada. Just for information, we have many London in the world. It's not just London, UK. Again, I was lucky. I was trained by Professor Vladimir Hachinsky, and after that, Dr. David Spence. Um, I was so lucky in my life that I had great mentors, but still I remained in love with public health. I designed a new study, I call it LANS, which is London Atherosclerosis Environmental Demographic and Socioeconomic Study. Um, this is the one of the first paper that I published. I look at socioeconomic status and atherosclerosis. Just, I don't want to go to detail of that, but imagine that you have a map of your city and imagine that in your map, what I'm doing, it's adding layers and layers and layers of vascular disease environmental areas, social deprivation, water, noise pollution, and whatever you think, we, from crime to um, walkability and to divorce and everything. What I have, it's now millions of variables in 65,000 cases with all of their data from social, environmental to outcomes. Now, I want to ask this question, and I will wait for just one second from my junior colleagues. How many association studies do you think I can publish? I will wait just for a couple of seconds and imagine how many I can publish. My answer to you, friends, it's I am bored of publishing association studies. I'm so bored of that. It's enough. Now, we plan to go for NIH grant, a big grant for risk stratification, and the plan is shift from routine analysis that I still in love with them to machine learning and go with stratification studies and find a new answer based on epidemiological studies. I hope that you are not bored with my presentation. Thank you so much. And if there is any question, I'm happy to answer that. Thank you, Professor Azar Kaju, for very nice presentation, for your nice information we have. Uh, now we are ready for a question about questions. There is no question in the question part. Dr. Safiri. Dr. Safiri, do you have Sorry, any I have comment? an idea, not question. Okay. Professor And there is a question, I think, about uh, presentation of Dr. Sharifipur. Uh, Dr. Sharifipur not joined us, I think. No, there is no. But the uh, question is about uh, the risk factors, please. The risk factor is the uh, similar in the Young adult, I think, no, but um, I'm suggesting that 
question. And uh, it's that uh, for, I think for assessing the association between, you hear me? Yes, yes. Please, Could Dr. you hear Safiri. me? Dr. Safiri, you are? Doctor, the question from Doctor Sancharifipur: uh, What were the major uh, hurdles that uh, face while attempting the population-based study? Doctor Sharifipur. not here. Professor Azar Paju, do you have a comment about the question? Um, I don't, but about, perhaps something about, that it's a recommendation from WHO about epidemiological study in low income country. Um, perhaps instead of, I, I did that and I'm still doing cohorts. So I love cohorts. I know cohorts, it's something that gives you power. The cohort that I'm now doing, it's more than 30 five years and I'm planning to continue that, the lands that I told you. But for some friends and colleagues from like wheat, low source of money, my suggestion is instead of going to cross-sectional, instead of going to cohort, go with cross-sectional and then repeat your cross-sectional again in one, instead of like one, then 10 years or five years. Cohort, it's difficult. But if you love to do that, I'm happy to help you. Is there any question? I'm happy to share my experiences with all of you guys. Okay. Yeah. As you said, the court study is more difficult and needs more budget. But fortunately, in our country, some cohort is going and since about a few years. But uh, I don't have information about the stroke uh, uh, statistics, but uh, it is going on, fortunately. In the future years, I I, want, I think that a good data about that. And uh, we have a study for Sazar as a, uh, in a small sample, about um, 5,000 in our uh, city in Tabriz in 2009 as a cluster base by the run by the postal code uh, we received the same uh, uh, incidents as you said in Mashhad and Dr. Uh, Esan said in Qom I think the similar data about incidents and prevalence in our city okay It's a good idea to have Mehdi postal codes um, again for our students and friends here. Um, if you have postal codes, remember postal code, it's identifier, so you are not able to share it, correct? But imagine that you have a group of postal codes. You can combine some of them together. Here in Canada, we call it dissemination area. These postal codes okay. include, for example, 500 people. These 500 people, they share similar socioeconomic classes. Now you yes. have the power to do um, GIS studies, geographic information studies. If we can do that in our countries, this will help us. So instead of going with postal codes, which is identifier, go with a little bit bigger than that, go with dissemination areas, uh, define your dissemination areas based on some highlights. For example, in Mashhad study, what I did, I used, I didn't have any idea at that time, but I used big boulevards to separate areas. So I did know because it's sometimes difficult to ask a patient, where do you live? They will tell you, I live in this neighborhood, but which side of the boulevard? So this will help us. So, but again, back to your question, perhaps instead of just postal code,
going with dissemination areas will help us to do more studies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm, there is no open question, I think, no. But uh, we don't have uh, Dr. Sharifi Poor in this time. I think they two time the problem in the overlapping with other program. Uh, if you no other question, no, I think no other question. Dr. Safiri, do you have other comments? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Azad Haju, for your great presentation. I think some uh, methodological points could be, could be considered, considered in your presentation. For example, you examined the association between socioeconomic status with stroke incidence, uh, but, but I think the blinder OXA decomposition methods could uh, clarify the association between SES and stroke incidence uh, very clearly and efficiently. This is my comment. And uh, another one is that I think the regional level studies um, uh, be funded by the stroke or organization and the other related organizations and just uh, doing uh, research in one of the the specific regions uh, interesting for other uh, researchers in the foreign countries. Uh, but uh, uh, the other point is that I think one of the questions was about the risk factors pattern in the Iran and the MENA countries. Uh, we published a study using the GBD data in the uh, 2022 and uh, described that the patterns of risk factors is different between the countries. For example, the obesity was uh, definitely different between the Arab countries and Iran. I think doing the uh, studies with the real data will be more will be more uh, useful for the modeling based studies. As uh, in the MENA region, we have few studies, uh, few national studies in the countries, and this is one of the uh, uh, limitations of the, our region for, for participating in the model-based studies. And if you have any comment, <clears throat> please uh, let us know. Oh, definitely we need to do that. Um, I was thinking, a couple of weeks ago with chair of public health here, we have um, we have a, a very big fund to support Africa for many African studies. And I was telling them that, that we need to also do same for Middle East. Um, so yes, something that I think we need to do, it's one, we need to have more meetings like this to discuss, share our concerns about stroke, vascular disease, and share our concerns about risk factors, um, discuss about the way that we can do at the same time. Um, just remember, there are other sources in the world that we can use. So as I said here, we have a big fund to do a study in Africa. Why we should not have the same fund to do studies in Middle East and the head of public health, he was so happy when I told him that we can do that. I didn't know at that time about this meeting because it was a short notice. Matty called me a couple of days, like a couple of weeks ago and I was walking again. <laughs> so it was difficult to talk. But anyway, um, definitely we need to do that. We need to have our um, data. We are not able to use um, Western data for Middle Eastern country, North African studies. Even if you go to WHO Monica study, you can see Eastern European and Western European, they are completely different. So we need to have good, rich data in our countries. However, as I said, 
cohort studies in countries like us, it's very difficult. So perhaps one option, as I said, and this is a suggestion from WHO to go cross-sectional, do it now, and then repeat it after 10 years, seeing what's happening. So I was, let's say, happy and unhappy with the result of Dr. Sharifi Pur, because I still see that the incidence of a stroke is too high. I expected to hear that, okay, we reduce that. But unfortunately, it is still higher than many other countries of the world. So it means that between these 10 years after my original study and Efsan studies, nothing major happened at public level. This is something that I like to write with Efsan if he likes to do that with me. We need to say what was the gap in public health, but I agree 100% Said, with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Azar Paju. Uh, we have uh, many hospital-based studies about a stroke, uh, and we have uh, a stroke registry in uh, our countries ongoing, but, uh, and other studies in seats, uh, you know, uh, about uh, near uh, 10 centers, active center registered in seats, and we are entering the data in seats registry, but I think this data can cannot uh, represent the uh, whole population. It is only hospital-based, I think. Okay. I think there is no question and the time is, uh, I think it's going to be end. Uh, in the end, uh, I'd like to thank uh, again uh, Professor Azar Paju and Dr. Esai Sharifi Pur and uh, Dr. Safiri and um, Professor uh, Sohail Arrok and Mena So and uh, Mena uh, MCO and all team that uh, arranged this nice webinar. Thank you very much. <laughs>